It's Benji Cole, son of Al Cole from CBS Radio and host of People of Distinction. The talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. Run to our website, peopleofdistinction.org, for more info. Or you can always email me directly at benji at alcoholenterprises.com. And on the line with us today, we have Marion Catterall. We'll be discussing her wonderful book, Let Love Be My Judge. Available for purchase through Amazon, barnesandnoble.com. But people, listen. If you want to get everything that Marion has to offer, do yourself a favor and head directly to her personal site. And that's marioncatterall.com. It's M-A-R-I-O-N-C-A-T-T-E-R-A-L-L.com. There you'll find more information on Marion herself, more information on this fantastic narrative, Let Love Be My Judge. But guys, get this. Marion has another three books that she's also written that have been published already and are available for purchase. And that's Hold Me Close and Closer Still, To Forgive But Not To Forget, and lastly, Ring of Love. I absolutely love it. Each individually unique amongst themselves in a wonderful journey for you to embark upon. So make sure that you're heading on over to her Amazon Barnes and Noble page or directly to her personal site, MarionCatterall.com to gather more. And I will say, Marion was brought to our network, People of Distinction, today by some of the best publishers in the business. Diamond Media Press Publishing. So if you all have a book that you'd like moved, make sure you're giving yourself the best gift you could possibly give and you move it through Diamond Media. You can find out more information on them at diamondmediapressco.com. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Marion, first and foremost, welcome to People of Distinction and thank you for being a guest with us today. How are you? Thank you, Benji. I am fine today. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, listen, we're very much looking forward to this, Mary, and as I stated, just to have another book to the shelf, yeah, to embark upon a safe journey. I know I'm looking forward to it. I know my listening audience is as well. But before we go into the book, Marion, let's hold off slightly. Start by telling our listening audience a little bit more about yourself and your background, please. My background, I'm a middle-aged lady. I have children and grandchildren. I have in the past, ran my own haulage business. I'm a businesswoman, started in the uh, banking sector. So uh, when you think about penning a book, it was completely alien at the time. But um, it's something I did. And from writing that first novel, I found that with professional reviews and people being extremely interested in it, I penned another three, and a fifth one is getting ready to be published. So that's how that's me. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, I'm happy, happy go lucky, but I have a very, very beautiful imagination, and that imagination mm-hmm. can put me into characters, into places, into all sorts of different countries. Each one of my four books is situated in a different place in the world and different circumstances. And yes, I, uh, it's quite an escapism for myself and I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Marion, curiosity for myself. Let's talk about inspiration for a second. Now, you just said you're a businesswoman, right? I mean, writing is definitely not something that that you had ever really thought that you would be embarking upon. So I'm curious, how does one go from being a businesswoman one day to writing four books, five on the horizon, another day? Talk to us a little bit more about that inspiration, please. Well, the inspiration actually was more forced on me than actually sitting there and thinking, oh, Mm -hmm. I think I'll write a novel. Um, I was in hospital for a very long time, very bored. And, you know, anybody that's been in can tell you, you look around the room and you pick up magazines and you pick up the flowery love stories, the little books, and you sit there and the the period dramas. And it just gets a bit bleh. There's not Mm -hmm. much to go on. And it was only when somebody passed me over 
I don't know if I can say this, but it was a Fifty Shades of Grey book, one of them. I got halfway through it and thought, my goodness me, it might be sort of decent enough to read, but it wasn't true to life. It's not the sort of thing you come across in your own life every day. And I said to my consultant when he was poo-hooing at my choice of book, um, why don't you, why are you here, you're going to be here a while, why don't you write a book yourself then? And I said, I will. And I sat down that night when my husband brought me a laptop and off I went and that's it. I got so engrossed in characters. I mean, I loved every one of my characters. They were real. I mean, really real people. And the drama, I did research on each one of the stories. There's a lot of drama. It isn't all flowery and chocolate boxy. It was fascinating. So fascinating that on my first attempt, I got five stars reviews from Forward Clarion and then wow. another five from Forward Clarion on boot two and then a three on boot three. I mean, there was no doubt that professional reviewers went mad for them, and which surprised me because I had no official training, but I knew exactly what a reader wanted. And my books were aimed at the middle-aged lady who sit there reading the flowery romances mm-hmm. to, and everybody that read it they were all saying the same they couldn't put it down they thought it was fantastic I got so many good reviews but the youngster I wouldn't say it's their cup of tea they have to have some life behind them before they pick a book up like mine and read it and understand where you're going you know there's heartache there's um, I mean, heartache is one of the biggest emotions that that a woman will ever come across. And there's a lot of joy as well in a book coming to its end and things working out for people. Absolutely. So, yes, I got quite, quite engrossed in every one, <laughs> to say the least. I love it. Listen, Mary, without further ado, let love be my judge. Tell us a little bit more about your narrative. Tell you a little bit more about the book itself. Uh, to start off with, it is based in America. The only one that's based in America. I'm sat in Great Britain at the moment in a very quiet room. But on this particular occasion, I wrote a book about a judge in America. So I spent a long time uh, finding out about the judicial system in America. Completely different than ours. You know, always the same end, but um, they have different ways of doing it, plea bargaining, this, this and this, and where they go to, when they get to, you know, as time goes on, they go to the Senate. Um, It's all very, very different. So I got the research done. Everything was sort of fascinating on that score. And then I put one of my characters into this situation of being in this judicial system and meeting this particular judge and this particular judge to be honest I could have fallen in love with him myself what a man he was wonderful character wise everything about him and the bit the book takes you through all the problems that my character uh, my heroine sort of finds herself and how they come about getting together, mm-hmm. um, how they had all the problems with the court, um, just everything. But it was true to life as in America, not in like Great Britain. So you'd have to know something about the, the, the system in America. And right. before long, I'd, I'd charge through, put, put my character in some fantastic situations. And right at the end, it all came to, like they all do, um, with so much drama and, uh, and love and sex and life, life itself, all, the, uh, all the, the emotions that go with what happens on a day-to-day basis, especially for a middle-aged woman. So that's what's happening with my book. Fantastic. 
Guys, again, here on the line with Marion Catterall. We're discussing her wonderful book, Let Love Be My Judge, available for purchase through Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or directly through her personal site, MarionCatterall.com. Marion, next question that I'd love to get into. Listen, I, I, I love the title of your book, right? I mean, it definitely catches your eye. It's engaging, and it just really, it's very intriguing, right? And it brings you in. Now, I can assume where that title comes from and the connection that it has with the narrative itself. But Marion, you know what happens when you assume. So I'm not going to do that to you. I have you here on the line. I can come right out and ask. Talk to our listening audience about the title of your book and really why you chose that to be the representation for it. Well, funnily enough, you get many sayings in life and different countries have different sayings. Um, uh, for example, this is just one. You can get somebody in one country who says, I want to be by your side and in your bed. It's a proposal. It's, um, it's quite common in Europe, but not in other countries. And let love be my judge is a saying. It's just one of those sayings that sticks in your mind. I've got thousands stuck in my brain. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like to forgive but not to forget is another Great Britain saying, no, I will forgive, but I will never forget. You can alter it whichever way you want. Um, hold me close and closer still. Again, it's one of those sayings that grips you. And I've got thousands of these beautiful little one-liners that say everything. So if, when, as soon as I start writing a book, I'll find that one will just appear. And I'll think, that's it. That's it. That'll do. <laughs> so let love be my judge was something that just popped in the head and I thought, that covers it all. I love it. Marion, uh, listen, you mentioned before that your book is not for the younger crowd, right? It's it's for a more seasoned individual. Yeah. Now, it's, I want to I wanna touch up yeah. on that a little bit Some, more. I think I, I say, I say it is. I mean, I've, I've when, obviously, when it was published and I got the professional reviews, I gave my daughter and all her friends copies. I gave, you know, associates, everybody, you know, and just said, have a read, tell me what you think. And even the 20-year-olds all said the same. Wow, Marion, <laughs> that did have a heck of a punch. That was brilliant, especially as I, ha I have no training as mm -hmm. such, you know. I don't go in for, oh, the river was flowing fast and the water was blue and the trees were green. I don't go for that sort of thing. There's the story. You read it and see what you think. So it's straight to the point. There's no hold of guard. So you know what's coming as soon as you start that chapter. And it's some, everybody, even the youngsters said, wow. But it is aimed for a middle-aged reader who wants drama, who wants um, excitement, you know, who wants to, like, fear, who wants to go, oh! you know. I was, well, I don't know which book it was, to be honest, but I was doing a particular thing um, in Scotland in one of the, the novels, and there was quite a fearful scene. And uh, and somebody banged the door and I jumped because I was so engrossed in where I was that it made me jump. <laughs> it made me jump. <laughs> it's the same with sad scenes. I sat there sometimes and I've cried when I finished the scene because it was so real. And that's what I wanted. I wanted wow. a good drama. I didn't want the flowery romance, like he looked into my eyes, blah, 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 blah. Because we're all getting, <laughs> well, I think I'm getting too old for the flowery romances. I want gritty, gritty a really good drama, something that you can't wait to pick up again and find out what happens. Marion, listen, last question here pertaining to this book, because I do want to give you an opportunity to at least go into one of the other narratives that you've written. Now, as we close out of Let Love Be My Judge, 
I'm curious, Marion, what would you say was a highlight for you in writing the book? Or if not a highlight, maybe something that surprised you that you weren't anticipating prior to embarking upon the journey? On that particular book, like Love Be My Judge. Yes. Um, what surprised me with it, the amount of um, research that I've done, and obviously um, a, a British woman who was in America caught up in that in that uh, judicial scheme. Um, what surprised me was, and what I'd found out in the past. She had to fight for the help that she required. So I found that from all sorts of readings. Um, and it's different. It's different from place to place. You know, I'm not saying that Great Britain is, is a softer way of going through the courts, not at all. But it's different. And there were times when I was writing, let not be my judge, where I could put feelings down into it the feelings of loss and the feelings of despair, real, real despair, that just continuing on a day-to-day basis doing doing the story, the storyline, mm-hmm. was really dramatic. And that's where, when I'd finished it, I was extremely, extremely proud. And like I said, the professional reviews for the Forward Clarion, they all agreed with how I felt. Marion, as I stated to my listening audience when we first started, this is not the only book that you've written. Okay, you have four currently no, out right no. now, three others, <laughs> and then you have a fifth one on the horizon. Yes. Now, Marion, listen, nobody knows your books yes, as well like as you. <laughs> nobody knows your books as well as you, Marion. So I'm going to leave it up to you, dealer's choice. On what other book you would like to discuss briefly, since we do have a few minutes before we tie up, please talk to us in a little bit more detail about one of your other books, either one of the three that have already been published, or the three others that have already been published, rather, or the fifth that's on the horizon. Talk to us a little bit more about one of your other books, please. Right. Well, I am going to choose, obviously, the first book that I wrote, where I was a complete novice, where I had to... Um, write um, a paragraph about the author and a paragraph about the book and and then you had to list the the, uh, uh, chapters, all new to me, um, etc, etc. That one was the one I even got the Purple Star from the Pacific Boot Review and that goes on all my letter headings. I mean, that was quite... um, uh, quite an award to win, and they're all on the book. My publishers have put have put all my um, awards and, and uh, reviews on. The first one, I can honestly say, blew me away, and obviously it blew everybody away because no sooner had I finished one, than the people that mattered were desperate for me to do a, t- a second. Mm-hmm. And so if I was to do anything, I'd, I'd, I'd go hold me close and closer still. It's my baby. It was mine. Um, it, it, it's just beautiful to read, very, uh, to read, very, very dramatic. And that's based in France. It's more of a European thing. Um, uh, and beautiful, beautiful story with... Mm, a lot of drama with what happens. I mean, there's, there's an actually a funeral, and I actually sat and cried during writing that funeral scene. It wow. was it's so. Uh, it's a descriptive thing. Whether I, it's my imagination, I think. Do you know? I um, it's not long ago that um, when somebody mentioned about Benji, you know. Um, doing this, I thought, oh, goodness me, I'll get hold of the first book and I'll, I'll, I'll have a read. And I read it and I couldn't believe I'd done it. I was absolutely amazed. <laughs> and I had, obviously. <laughs> but you forget, you forget just how you went with the flow and you were totally in those situations and the characters, and the characters are so dramatic that 
that you know them inside out. So they weren't just a name on a page. I love all my characters. And, I mean, on one particular book, I have a large Scotsman. <laughs> and, um, and, and it's based in Scotland. And I can read and laugh at him. He's wonderful. He's absolutely marvellous. <laughs> and then I think, did you write that? <laughs> and I did, yes. <laughs> um, I don't know where it comes from. It, it's, I think it's just I'm blessed with an imagination that puts ordinary lives true to life. You know, not looking for romance, but coming across things mm -hmm. um, with such power um, that you have to stop for a moment to get your breath back and think, oh my God, what's she going to do now? It really is. The way I, I, I write it. I, I was told by a publisher, why don't you go to college and take up some sort of uh, course, you know, where they, they help you write about the colour of the, the, the trees and the colour of this and colour of that. And my publisher said, whatever you do, Marion, you do not alter the way you write. It is absolutely beautiful. Now, I thought that'll do me. So I just do it. I sit there and I get lost. <laughs> and I just fall. <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> and I love the characters. Of course. They're like friends. They're, they're, they're marvellous. I love it. Listen, you know... <sighs> Marion, I could sit here, I could talk to you for hours, okay? A, your your aura, right, is so effervescent. I mean, you have such a wonderful demeanor to you, so I, I am just absolutely enthralled with the conversation. But also, you have that many works Lovely. of creation that you've made, and we can sit here, we can talk about all of them. But listen... For the sake of the interview, we're not going to do that, guys, okay? You know what you have to do. I've said it before, I'm going to say it again. We're here on the line with Marion Catterall. We just finished discussing her wonderful book, Let Love Be My Judge, available for purchase through Amazon and barnesandnoble.com. But make sure you're heading to her personal site, MarionCatterall.com, to gather everything that she has in store. Remember, Let Love Be My Judge is one book. She has four in totality, currently a fifth on the horizon. So when you go and pick up Let Love Be My That's Judge, correct. also look into Hold Me Close and Closer Still, To Forgive But Not To Forget, and Ring of Love. And check in frequently for that fifth That's book correct. the moment Thank it you. becomes available. You surely will not be disappointed. Marion, this has been an absolute no, honor. Definitely. Such a pleasure. Thank you once again for being a guest with us today on People of Distinction. Thank you, Benji.